Oh, I've just disconnected an HT lead and then put in just a spark plug that I've got lying around and then it's connecting, obviously, or it's touching the metalwork of the engine, so it should have a nice enough earth. So the idea is now if I crank over the engine, I should be able to see the spark and that way we'll at least confirm whether we do or don't have a spark. This is turning out to be a bit of a quandary. We've definitely got loads of spark, which is good, and we know that when we operate our little door here, the fuel pump works. So if we've got fuel and we've got spark, we should definitely have bangs. Even if I've wobbled the dizzy and actually maybe not put it back in the right position so the sparks aren't happening quite when they're supposed to, we still get some kind of bang, we still get some kind of sign of life, and there's nothing at the moment. Now what I'm wondering is we know that the fuel pump works on the button for sure, but I haven't actually tested the fuel pump. Now it's reinstalled as part of the car. So even though we can hear it actually spinning up, don't know for sure that it's spinning the right way. So I think what I'll do is I'll just crack off that fuel line again, pop it into a bottle and operate it from here. And then let's see if we are getting some fuel. Okay, so here goes. Well, I can hear the pump spinning away merrily, but there's no fuel coming out. So that is our problem. So it's kind of good news, at least I know what's going on. So it's obviously something to do with the wiring at the other end. Hmm. Right, well, let's have a look at this connector here. So if I just unplug it, <laughs> it's actually quite a good seal. So I've got this one here, which is obviously the one that goes all the way up into the fuel tank. That's our new cable there. And then this is the original sort of socket, if you like, that was part of the car. Now, obviously the rest of it goes to the sender. So there's a common earth. So that's got to be correct. And then there's also the feed wire here, which then would normally take the 12 volts, which would then make the pump work. Now, what's interesting is when I was playing around with my switch, I actually wired it up as I'd imagined, so I just figured that probably the brown was probably positive and the blue was probably negative. And in fact, the pump then ran backwards. So I strongly suspect that if we swap those wires over, we might have some joy. So if I now just plug in my wire, so I put this one into the blue one there. So now, so this blue one here normally connects to the black one. So if I now actually connect it to the other side, so I'll put it to the, what would normally be the feed. And then I'll do the same on the other side to so swap this one over as well. And then just pop that into the other one. So theoretically what was positive is now negative and vice versa. So with any luck, our pump should now actually produce fuel into the engine bay. Right, let's try again. <laughs> Fantastic, so there we go, mystery solved. So all I have to do now is make that fix permanent. Right now, to make this fix permanent, what I need to do is somehow is swap those wires over. Now, to do that, I could either have a look at obviously the wire that's going all the way into the fuel pump, or I could have a look at the stuff that's attached to the car. Now, if I use the original cable as an idea, if I just take off these other wires, don't need those anymore. Now, if I just hold that up, now the original wire would have been black and then the new wire is blue and then the original wire would have been white and the new wire is brown. So interestingly, the wiring on both the old pump and the new pump are the same. So that's fine. So then it rather suggests that perhaps it's possible that in the factory, even though the cable's correct, that actually maybe how they were connected up onto the pump itself, somehow somebody got it wrong and mixed them up. Now, as far as the wiring limb on the car and also the sender, obviously we know that two of those wires were both earths, they were already connected together in a broken contact. So I'm pretty confident that that's actually correct. And obviously the white wire with the green tracer is almost certainly going to be positive. So I think the car is fine. I think it's this that's the problem. But rather than kind of cut the wires and just solder them or use some crimps maybe to swap them over, I could perhaps just pull the pins out and then swap their positions and pop them back together again. So here goes. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is a little rubber bung on the back of the connector here. So now I've got my blue going to the right hand side, my brown going to the left. I'm now going to try and do, with any luck, 
if I just get a little Bradley thing, if I can do this, I'm going to try and pull the wires out of the thing at the same time as kind of wiggling them round. Now what I'm going to try and do, there's going to be two either brass or copper connectors in there and they're going to have two little pins that sort of stick out of there, out of this pressed bit of metal that's been rolled into a tube and then that's been shoved into this plastic holder. So those little kind of ears hold them in place. What I'm hoping is if I can kind of wiggle it around I might just be able to disturb one or the other or both. Okay there's one. Oh. Ah, okay, got it. Right now, before I forget which was which, is I'm going to put my brown wire where the blue wire used to be, and then the blue wire where the brown wire used to be. The only thing I can see as an issue with that is going to be our little grommet, but I think we should be able to wiggle it around enough. Just get that last little bit in there. Look at that. Fantastic. So we've now got our connectors back in our little plug. And the wires, although they're now kind of wrong for the wire, they are now correct for the fuel pump. Which means I can just pop that little dust cover back in, reconnect it, and then we should be good to go. And our pump should produce fuel all the way into the engine bay. Right, there we go. Job done. Well, surely we are now there. We've got our refurbished fuel tank, we've got our new fuel lines, we've got our new fuel pump actually delivering fuel into the engine bay. We've got a spark. When I crank over this engine, she should just fire into life. But that is a job for today. Ignition on. Here we go. It's fantastic! Johnny's not wrong, it runs beautifully. Now, I know I shouldn't rev it too much, but come on, this is just really what a moment. After all that faffing about, we now have a working Range Rover. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> It's taken far too many months to get John's garden fine Range Rover to actually run, but now it is running. I'm sure he's going to be stoked for one thing, but also it now means I can drive it out of the workshop and as promised to an MOT station, but not before I've checked all the fluids and given it a thorough clean. And all of that is a job for another day. Thanks for stopping by the workshop. If you enjoyed the video even just a little bit, then click like. If you hated it, well then click like three times. Also remember to leave your thoughts and your questions in the comments. And obviously we'd love to see you again soon, so please remember to click subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell for notifications of when the next video is published, or when I have some intriguing news.